So, uh, I will uh, now uh, invite uh, Jean-Charles uh, to uh, uh, kick us off with a reflection on the run-up to and the imperatives of the Paris COP. So. Some of that. When I was invited here, I, I, I was thinking, well, what is useful to say tonight? So, so I, I am decided, decided to make, make a very personal pre presentation. For, for those who don't know me, I was a lot of time in the IPCC uh, since 1995, and I was part of the French delegation. I'm still part, but between Kyoto, before Kyoto and COPSIS, I was really one of the people really involved in the negotiation. So I have my personal vision of that. And then I will, try, I will finish my, my talk about COP21, COP but I think this is impossible to understand COP21 if the young generation doesn't have something in mind about what, what was before. And uh, this title is, well, uh, in Latin, because this um, reminds me about the time in which I was better in, in, in Latin than in English. I'm not very good in English, but at that time I was very bad. So, um, so in the old times, very quickly, that's important to understand. Uh, this starts in 88. The climate affair is launched by the G7, the, the G, the G7 with George Bush and, and, and Madame Thatcher. You cannot understand the launch of that without having in mind the, the ambiance in the world. With uh, the energy security with very low oil prices at that time, and with the, the perestroika, uh, the, the start of the decline of the USSR. This was uh, some kind of very strong geopolitical context in the world economy at that time. Then we launched that, and we come in Rio. In Rio de Janeiro, what is important that you have to understand what happens in this time? Uh, it is launched. European countries said that's a good idea. What is it, why it, it is a good idea? Because energy, energy security, blah, blah, blah. And because we need a carbon price, and if we have a carbon tax, we'll uh, succeed in cutting the labor, the labor taxes, will be good for the competitiveness, social security, and so on. That's the first white book, 91, with the law and others. So that's the ambience. So we go ahead. What is important that you understand is that the climate affair is not managed as a climate affair purely. Ge geopolitics, the way in which the macroeconomy, I would say that the people in charge of the global economy in the, in the European Union says well, that's, a that's a good opportunity to, 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 to make some progress. Rio de Janeiro, well, uh, this uh, phase of, well, I tried in 15 seconds because of the French. One very famous now colleague of mine, he was the same high school, Grand uh, uh, the Dominique Schroskan, well known or badly known for other reasons, who says, well, that's stupid to have a, a, a mixed tax on carbon and energy because the French wanted want a single tax on carbon, not on uh, energy, because the nuclear power is clean. And the joke was, well, um, is as stupid as taxing Coca-Cola to fight against alcoholism. Then the French stopped to support the carbon tax. In practice, there was a lot of industrial lobbies behind that. Okay? But the turning point was there. We arrived with nothing in Rio, and then start the, what I call the false idea. We come in Rio, and the, the developed countries are there, we have nothing on the table, no tax, nothing. And they say, well, why are we here? And the response was sympathetic, but it was okay. Oh, uh, don't worry. We will make, we, the North, we'll make commitments. Well, I'm sorry. <coughs> this works. We'll make commitments, but uh, you will make commitments later, okay? We will have a demonstration effect. And increasingly, I discovered that it was a really bad idea. Berlin, I will explain why. Because this is still on the table now, okay? So we go ahead, 
and you, uh, you will join her us later. Sympathetic. Uh, Berlin, we come at Berlin. We always in Europe t talk about taxes, nothing on caps and caps on trade. And then the, uh, the Germans come, came, they, they said, well, we can do minus 25% of decrease in the emissions uh, in uh, 2010. Why that? Two reasons. The real reason why is that they didn't want any tax on their <coughs> industry. They were very happy to have the French killing the carbon tax in, in Europe because they, they didn't have on their shoulder the responsibility of that. They had a commitment not to have a, never a carbon price on their uh, industry and to have only voluntary commitments. We come at Berlin. Berlin, they come on that. Well, hypnosis. Why hypnosis? Well, that's well, big economy. We said we can do that. Yes, they could do that because they are recuperated east of Germany. Plus, well, start to exit from coal, energy efficiency, good bargain on that. But, but basically, the, this was there. And I can tell you that the, 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 I discussed that with Jonathan Pershing, was the lead of the uh, US delegation at that time. US delegation has a mandate not to accept any cap discussion, only taxes. They were first to phone to the Maison Blanche, the White House, in the night to change the mandate. And then we passed to Kyoto under hypnosis because no, nobody really wanted that. To discuss the cap on trade, because you have cap, you need trade. And because I have forced to go in hurry, why then in Kyoto was the price to pay for a false good idea? I can tell you. I negotiated with the, the US the, the compromise. We had a compromise. Nobody knows that now. Two years before, I hope I will uh, save time if I, this works. Yes. Two days before, uh, India, in the name of the G77, said, we oppose to that. Cap and trade never work. We don't want any trade until the question of the entitlement of primary emission rights is resolved. Imagine that you have two days to discuss the per capita distribution in the world. What comes back here is what? I discussed with, uh, with Sharma and he said, well, that's the false good idea. Well, you decided to launch something. And then you say, we do nothing, but we are not stupid. We know that you're, you are creating a system. We want to find the rules of the system. And I, you look at he, he, he put a paper and said, well, you told us that, well, there was a cake to eat. You have eaten two-thirds of the cake, and you say that you will be very fair in sharing the rest of the cake. We don't believe that. But the rhetoric was in place. Fair burden sharing, so on and so forth. There are a lot of papers on that. Uh, you, we create a rhetoric which was totally incapable to link with the developing countries, to be understood by them. I add also to that the, the Bill Hegel uh, re resolution in the US, uh, unanimous votation by, by, the, by the Senate. Uh, we said we don't want meaningful participation. We will never accept this type of system without the meaningful participation of developing countries. Why that? Simple. Because if I accept gaps, I accept flows, automatic flows, and for ge geopolitical reasons, I don't want that. At, at, at that time, there was $10 billion to the Russian. Okay. So in Kyoto, it was clear that there is a mistake made in the cap approach in the countries, and the, and the burden sh uh, uh, sharing approach. The problem we have is that, so I come back here, I will pass to, to Ten Hagen, this deal, because you can write my papers on that. We, we are early to succeed to have something, okay? But I keep, I keep that. The problem is that we have that in mind, and we came back to. In two, uh, now we arrive at 2009. We should have said, well, we understand better why we made mistakes, what was wrong in their approach, but we didn't do that. We didn't change the mental map of the de of the negotiation. When the negotiator came at at uh, Copenhagen, they had exactly the same. Ma uh, Mountain map. The cause of that, my personal interpretation, 
that this was, we were just a bit hypocritical in the mental map. Okay, it was easy to discuss about that. Uh, but we had a very easy explanation. We had the bad Bush, and then comes the good Obama. Simple. You don't have to make a lot of uh, discussions, okay? But the problem, the good Obama, he had a problem with the good Obama. Because of the death of uh, Edward Kennedy, the, the share of the, the representation uh, between the, the Democrats and the Republicans passed from 60 to 40 to 59 and 41. 60 to 40, he didn't have to ask the permission to, to the Republicans. But with the new force relationships, he could do nothing. His priority was health system. And he was right. I would have been in his place. That's fine. And then we create some kind of big expectations that we lose something in Copenhagen. We should have done that. No. Obama could no, do nothing. And what I say, missed step because we didn't use the really Copenhagen to revise the mental map. We did something. We created the so-called Great Climate Fund as a response to the demand of the, of the developing countries. Not bad. But always the same story. We put money, and we share the money. Huh? The, the, the same mistake, because then you are, who pays in function of what, the CBDR? Pays for what? Mitigation or adaptation? And for, for what country? You can make the least of the controversies about what to do with the Green Climate Fund. And we do that in a, in a previous situation, a situation which was very adverse, because we had the financial crisis in 2008. And then we say, we will give a lot of money, but the public budgets are, are uh, in deficit and then in practice. Huh? Uh, we will not do that. Cancun's, I call that a silent paradigm sheet. I will develop that, so that's fine. So that's the story. My interpretation is that we had a mental map adopted partly in other agnosis, and we, lost, we have lost a lot of time uh, with the same mental map. And we have really to review it very quickly. Oh, one minute to say, to give the ambience. That's purely ideological, but that's important. Raul Estrada, when he invented the CDM, uh, to go out of the crisis created by the Indians, he, put the, the, uh, he, he, he wrote that three months later. Look at the end of these sections. This disparity has been at the root of every colonization since the time of the Greeks, which is a very strong uh, sentence, which is uh, the post-colonial countries against us. Okay? You know, that's, this was not the reality, but this gives something which is in the mind of the people who are still there around the table. Okay? So now I come back to Cancun. Cancun, we say, well, we want to get rid of the burden sharing paradigm. Uh, we want uh, the concept of uh, we have uh, nationally appropriate mitigation uh, action, and in practice we want uh, what uh, is not here. That's my fault. Equitable access to development, which is the key sentence. Okay. Uh, the problem is that then how to do that? I have five minutes still, or ten minutes? Ten? Fine. Huh? <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Then I stop in practice, but I, I will comment about it. Okay. Then what, this was the title, I mean the subtitle, was, well, we talk about global energy, global climate, but global economy also. We are in a very precise moment of the world economy. Hmm? We want to launch to trigger energy transition. We know that energy transition is not only energy, this concerns tra uh, transportation, households. Uh, sectors will represent a large part of the uh, cross capital formation. We know what? We know that we'll have to pay more in terms of, of investment over the short term, but not over the long term. The incremental investment is 0.5% of for to GDP, which is, not, which is something substantial, but not, uh, which is affordable. Uh, the point is more that we have to redirect a lot of, a lot, a lot of investment. So technically, you can make a good story with that. That's, that's optimistic vision. The bad side of that, ah, but we, are in, we are in a context of depression economics. 
Uh, we talk about public debts, uh, saving lots. We have uh, Larry Sommer, who talks about the so-called uh, possibility of a secular stagnation. So we have to solve the problem. So the problem now is to say that if we want to be credible, to change the mental map, we have to accept that climate policies and energy transition has to be launched. Despite of, of, or because of this bad situation. Because the people now, they, 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 they will be, um, they will uh, look at TV, newspapers, talking about climate and so on. Well, oh, but what about my unemployment? The refugees? What happens in the Middle East? There are so many other urgencies. If, you know, if we don't develop a discourse making the link between the short term and the long term uh, uh, tensions, then we'll have a problem of, uh, of credibility. <coughs> I think that we have a chance if we, if we change the mental map, if we go quickly in that direction. Because what was the mistake? Implicitly, we have prices, cap and trade of taxes, we have compensating, compensating uh, uh, transfers between North and South. The problem is that carbon prices, if they are significant, hurt the capital stock in developing countries very, very heavily, in our countries also. But uh, $50 per ton of carbon doubles the cost of cement in, uh, in India. You will not ask the, the, the British and, and the French to compensate the Indians for that. And even $50 per ton will never control the dynamics of the urban uh, the, will not control the urban uh, dynamics in India, in Brazil, and so on, because these related to other prices, real estate speculation, land use changes, other determinants. So uh, we really have to, to, to account for that and to say, but how to align all these policies? We need a carbon price, we need prices, but they will not do the job alone. Second story, and we'll sit on, uh, on that, I think. We economists, we have made some, we have badly educated people about the role of prices. Because in practice, we have these type of things. We have, we rank cost, we say you have cost, and then you have prices, and you will equate the cost in every country, and we'll gain in uh, uh, inefficiency. But I'm sorry, this is true. Uh, the, the cost of the technology is not like the cost of uh, the price of an apple of uh, an, an orange on the uh, uh, in the merchant that, that's more complex the cost is there you have a lot of technologies some are pick here a and b assume that a is better than b you make a level as cost is better okay and b uh, is worse assume that b is uh, carbon intensive then you have a tax Okay, fine. I will conclude on that. You have a tax, and then B becomes worst. But nevertheless, B will not be adopted. Why that? Because A is so capital intensive that if you make a mistake, then you have to go to, to, go to see your banker, and your shareholder will say, oh, guy, no, 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 I don't like what you have made. I take so many uh, risks that I don't want to go there. So we have a problem in the nature of the modern capitalism, which, which hates the long-term uh, investments. And I will conclude on that then. I think we are talking, we look at what is written by the microeconomists. They talk about the saving lot, uh, the, the, the gap between propensity to save and propensity to invest. The chance we have, if we can explain that, we have, because we talk about serious sectors with large amount of the, uh, the cost, the cost capital formation. If we say we, we, we know how to accelerate these investments, if there is something which is as to see with the way in which we can guarantee the investment over the long run, and I will not develop that if we have one minute perhaps. Say the, the, the idea, and then, oh, so I, I will jump to the, to the, oh, I'm sorry, I made a mistake with that. The question though is that we need taxes, but we need to guarantee the investments. And to do that, we need what was made during the railway uh, re uh, revolution in the past. Public guarantee and assets. The assets in the past was the land. When you, you had the land, you had the land. Huh? And then the animal spirits of, of finance looked 
like that, because the, the, when you are line, even though it didn't work, you had the land. What is the equivalent now? We have to create carbon assets in the way that if we, have, if we agree on the uh, economic and social value of carbon, then, then we can, e and if we imagine that the governments can make some commitments of um, some quantity of guarantees they put, then you can create a system in which you can create carbon assets and then harness the, the, the animal spirit of finance to redirect the, 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 the large amount of savings out of the speculation to the carbon, low carbon transition and design mechanisms in which you cut down the uh, investment risks uh, in low carbon technologies. You have to go both sides to cut the risk on investment technologies and to use for that part of the savings the, you redirect. Then I conclude, and that's it, uh, that uh, we have signed uh, a lot of us uh, a declaration mm -hmm. that is uh, uh, which is now floating around in the corridors of the negotiation in, 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 uh, in Bonn. And uh, a lot of countries in Brazil, uh, South Saharan Africa, they understand that. We'll succeed now, but I think the, the challenge would be to develop better our thoughts about how to do economic finance and things like that. Thank you. Thank you very much.